All right, everybody, today we're doing a little video for my heap. I will put a link to one of his videos in the cards probably at the end of the video. So I'll stick around to the end. Uh, anyway, he had some questions about the apron and uh, some of the oilers. Uh, also a spring for the detent on the half nuts. So uh, we're going to be covering a whole bunch of little things that are maybe not super obvious to everybody. And, you know, I'm sure it'll help him. And hopefully this will help other people also. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the old iron shop. All right, guys. So if you like seeing old machines being brought back from the graveyard, uh, why don't you uh, consider subscribing? And, uh, you know, there'll be an icon down here, a little horizontal mill. Check it out. Also, at the end of the video, there'll be one. All right. So this is uh, from my heap. Uh, he was asking about uh, the spring for the detent on the uh, half nut lever here. And uh, just a note, uh, there's a few different variations on this half nut lever. Mine has got a, uh, it's kind of a round shape here, and it's got a slot head screw that goes into the end of the shaft. I believe most of them are made that way. Some of them got a little bit different shape here, just depending the vintage of it. Um, I do think there is actually one that might have like a pin through the side on really early ones, but I, I'm not sure if yours is that old. Anyway, so the uh, the detent is in here. So we'll take out this set screw. And this is an original set screw because you can see it's got a flat head. Uh, this would be, well, if you had a milling machine, this would be a fairly easy project. You could just start with a screw and, you know, use a, a slitting saw or something like that. Let's see if we can, it's got dog point, I think, on there. See if we can get a hold of the spring. And of course, it doesn't want to come out, probably. Hmm. I don't know why I can't get that to come out. All right. Let me stop it here and I'll get a pick. See if we can get a hold of it with a pick. All right. I fooled around in there. I got this kind of twisty little pick, um, but I wasn't able to get a hold of it. What I did, I just got this little small screwdriver and I got in there, I kind of poked on it. You know, I could feel I was compressing the spring. Finally, it seems to have come out. I think it's right here. Yeah, I thought it was right there. Well, I guess we're gonna have to poke around again. There it is. All right. Here is the spring. So my heap, I sure thought this was a lot longer than what it is. And it probably could be a little bit longer. Um, when I put that set screw in there, it goes in quite a, quite a good distance. But this, this thing here can't be any more than three eighths of an inch. Let me grab a scale here and we'll measure it just so we know for certain. All right, I measure this here. It's just about five sixteenths of an inch. Uh, three eighths would be fine. It, you know, like I said, there's plenty more room in here. Anyway, the ball's still inside of there, so I'm going to stick this back in before I lose it. I've tried once already here so far since I had it out. Uh, you can see how long the set screw is. It's pretty long. Put that in there and. You know, there's no reason you couldn't use an Allen set screw here. That's just just fortunate that we have the original one still. And how tight you make this here is got a lot to do with how the uh, see how this is flopping right now. There's no there's no interlock right there at all, or no lock up on it. Now it's starting to. Might have it just a touch tighter than that. I don't want it to fall out. I think that's good. All right, now one of the other things uh, my heap was uh, asking about are these, uh, if I can get in here. My bushings are really in really bad shape on that. <laughs> anyway, these uh, th this kind of an oiler here uh, this is not a Gitz oiler. Uh, I'll show you what a Gitz oiler is in a second. But uh, that is called a ball oiler because it has a ball with a spring behind it. 
And uh, this here, I believe this is the kind of uh, oil can that you've been looking for. Uh, I've got a few of these. If I can get this in the camera here. Look for one of these. This is a really good can. Uh, the Eagle number 66 is, is really popular and they're made of brass and really nice and they, they're a great can. Uh, I don't know when they were making these. I've actually got one that's old enough. It actually has a paper label. Um, anyway, Eagle 55, or excuse me, Eagle 58. Um, everyone I've seen and I've bought everyone I've ever seen has got that. Now this is something, this could be a lathe project if we can get it into focus here. I'm um, not sure exactly what the dimensions on that little cone is, but you know, you could find you a fitting probably at the hardware store or a little piece of brass hex, and you know, that could be made up on the lathe. Uh, if you want to buy one of these, probably th these things are considerably cheaper, I think, than the number 66s. Those are pretty hot collector items. Anyway, so the way this works, and you got to pretty much go straight in on that ball. But that cone seats on the ball, and you got to kind of lean on these things pretty good to make it seal. Oh, if I get a little bit, get my oil primed up. There we go. Push that on there, and then by holding the pressure on that, you hear the oil go in, and really nothing, nothing came out around where it's sealed. So that's how you put the oil into that type of an oiler. And there's, there's several of them here. There's one right there. And uh, I'll show you. There's two more. I think there's only three of that style oiler on the whole lathe. But let me show you the other two. They're on the front end of the apron here. All right. There is another one that's right here. It's a little hard to get it lit well. Um, by the way, somebody's done the horrible thing of painting over these. That's really lazy work. Uh, I might try taking something like, you know, a little screwdriver like this and see if you can just scratch the paint off the surface of it and uh, maybe use like a scribe point or something. Those balls should be hardened so you're not going to probably damage that ball. Just be careful, you know, and just I would just try to scratch the paint off of that. See if you can take a screwdriver like this and depress them and get the, the paint has probably kind of glued it closed. Probably everything that gets oiled by that is in, going to be in poor condition because if it's painted over, it probably hasn't gotten any oil in a long time. Anyway, so I'd try doing that. All right, let me show you where the last one is. All right, here's the last one of these uh, ball oilers. If you look, you can see when I push down on it, you can see there's oil like right there that sort of seeps out. Anyway, uh, I think you could probably clean those up. I don't think those need to get replaced. Um, if you had to, you're going to have to get this shaft out for sure. And I think there should be a hole drilled all the way through. You probably have to get a little punch in and punch them out from the backside. Um, and then I think they just get drove in just with like a, a kind of a press fit, you put them in there and then you would use just a, like a steel punch or a brass punch would be a better choice probably. And then you would just drive them in there. It, it should be replaceable. Um, but that's a pretty durable thing. They don't really fail that often. Okay, now I'll show you what a Getz Oiler looks like. This here, this is a Getz Oiler. And uh, it's a little flip-top job. I think it's probably supposed to have a little little felt plug goes in there. Uh, although, uh, maybe not. I don't know that I've ever seen one. At least not on one of these lathes. Um, there's one on either side of the, the spindle bearings and then on the counter shaft, there's two of them back there also. And I believe those are the only ones on these lathes. Everything else is just a hole that you squirt a little bit of oil in. Anyway, but these say uh, Gitz Brothers Manufacturing Company and those should be available if you ever needed them. Although I, I think your, your lathe probably had them. Uh, the guys that, that scrap these machines out, boy, these are a hot item to get pulled out and sold. It's an easy victim. So uh, the next thing I needed to address here for Joe is uh, the screws that hold. Uh, there's a little gear train that that allows you to move the carriage up and down the ways here. And uh, 
he had several different types of screws in there and I, I have some that I believe are original and um, here it is square nuts those are original everyone I've ever seen anybody take apart has got those and the back of this casting has got uh, you know a spot to lock that up so you don't have to try to put a wrench on it and let's uh, check them out I checked one of them earlier uh, this is quarter 20 thread and it is I'll get the right side of the scale here okay I don't know if you can read that but it's an uh, inch and a quarter long and uh, this type of head this is the thing that's important I guess here uh, this is called a Philister head uh, this one happens to be a Phillips but there's also another one in here that's a slot head so most of them on this machine are Phillips head I suppose maybe somebody may have swapped out a screw with an earlier lathe or something I don't know where the other kind of odd that there's mixed units there so we'll put that back in there and I have to kind of correct myself on something earlier in the video um, the little ball oilers there's one here one here and then there's another one over by the uh, half nut lever um, that type of an oiler is a ball oiler right uh, but I guess these ones were made by the Gitz Brothers company um, you know the little cup oilers with the flip tops up on the uh, spindle and the counter shaft are also Gitz oilers usually when people refer to Gitz oilers though it's the other type it's not these ball oilers so uh, I guess I was both right and wrong here sort of at the same time all right, guys, I, ho I hope that was helpful to uh, my heap and uh, maybe other people who also have Atlas lathes. Um, anyway, if you enjoyed that, why don't you consider uh, clicking on the old horizontal mill over here in the corner. And uh, I'll put a card for my heap up here also. And there should be some other videos coming down you might be interested in looking at also.